Jehovah and taste Christ is what is in us today. For the moment we receive Christ, we receive the wholeness of God, the wholeness of Christ in us, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the power that works in Christ is also at work in us, in the name of Jesus Christ. As we worship the Lord in this praise, let us worship God in this understanding, in the name of the Lord God Almighty. And with the same understanding, I want you to lift up your hands and continue worshiping the Lord in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Thanking Him because of having you or having brought Jesus Christ into our lives in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Having made it possible or making it possible for us to attain the likeness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you, o God, for the path that has happened in us, O God. Thank you for the likeness of Christ in us, O God. Thank you for the power of Christ that is at work in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your power that is at work in our lives, O God. Let Karina Mashanda bring into completion the work of Christ in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, let Karina Mashanda even to the last day in Jesus name Mashanda re korobo shekayana la karina mashanda ye karina mashanda re korobo shekayana le karana mashande ye karina mashande re bo khoshayana le karina mashande re bo khoshayana le karina mashande re bo shekerina makasayana le mashande re korobo shende re korobo shena ye karina mashande re koriba shakayana le korobo she karina makayana kuna kwa budu wewe mungu kwa kuinua kwa kuishi bwana hakuna mwingine kama wewe una sarisi kwa zetu bwana katika jina la yesu kristo we exalt you lord Le mashandere boko shandere kori mashanda ya karina mashandere kono boko shanda. Thank you for the power that has been shown unto us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, le karina mashanda. In your Majesty, we worship you.
God all able God all knowing there is none comparable to you you are the preserver of all life you are in charge you are in control of everything we have come to worship you we have come to honor you we have come to hear from you our eyes are on you today father as we hear your word transform us using your word let your word do that which no man is able to do let your word mold each one of us let your word deliver us oh god let your word restore us let your word help each one of us and even as we come out of this service we shall have a testimony that your word has made the difference in our lives we thank you in advance for what you're about to do in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen let's put our hands together for the lord a better hand for our god amen 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 we also want to thank the worship team for leading us powerfully let us celebrate them as they get back to their seats in the name of Jesus hallelujah i welcome each one of you to the service today you that are here and all those that are joining us online you're most welcome to this service it is our Thursday empowerment service whereby we come and we are empowered to be able to fulfill our glorious destinies. I want to allow you to take your seats so that we may be able to hear the word of God and that the word of God may mold us because it is the word that makes men and we are here to be made by the word of God. I, will, I want to read one verse of scripture and then we shall maybe lead others as we continue. And I want to begin by a very familiar verse to all of us. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 28. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 28. The Bible says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want to bring us a message this afternoon that I've titled, Bathing Your Success. Bathing Your Success. Bathing Your Success. Let me first lay this foundation that I have taken from this particular verse that we have read. Your fruitfulness, your multiplication, and your dominion on earth is not a suggestion 
from God. It is a command. I'll say that again. Your fruitfulness, your multiplication, your dominion on earth is not a suggestion from God, but it is a command that is given by God himself. And let me also say this. The success in life is a mandate from God. In other words, what God is telling Adam and Eve is that I want you to be successful. I command you to be successful. So in other words, they had a mandate. And the mandate that you are given by God is a mandate to go and to succeed. It is the will of God for each one of us to be a success. It was the will of God for Adam and Eve to be a success. But they had a role to pray in their success. And I want you to understand this afternoon, you who are seated here and you who is watching us online, that there is a role for you to pray if you will be successful. For you to experience success, you need to take your role and bath that success. And I want to teach you tonight how you can bath your success. The kind of success that God has mandated you to bath. Because you are created for success. You are designed for success. God wants you to succeed. But there is a role for you to pray. Number one thing I want to put it to you is that you must take responsibility for your success. You must take responsibility for your success. And let me say this, you are a hundred percent responsible for your success. I'll say that again. You are 100% responsible for your success. And having said that, let me say this also. If it is going to be, it is up to you. I know I've said that before. If success will be in your life, then it is up to you. If you don't do it, there is no one who will do it for you. If you don't take responsibility for your success, then there is no one that will take responsibility for your success. I'll give you an example of a man that we talk about many times, the man by the name of Jabez. Jabez is born and he is named Jabez by the mother, meaning that he is a causer of pain. And, and, and a time came when Jabez took responsibility for his life. If he never did it, he would have lived a life that is below what God had earmarked for him. It is no God that had limited him. It was the mother by calling him that name. But Jabez took responsibility and said, if it must change, it will take me. And I want you to know, if your situation will change, it will take your responsibility. If you will succeed in this life, 
it will be because you have taken responsibility for your success and for your life. And let me say this, if you are not happy with the way your life is, then you must change some things. You must take responsibility and change some things in your life. Change some actions in your life. Remove some friends from your life. Remove some things that are not making you become what God has intended for you to become. It is you to take responsibility. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you must take responsibility for your success. You know, one day I said that losers let it happen, but winners make it happen. And I want to, you to move from the area of letting it happen into the dimension of making it happen. Because losers let it happen, but winners make it happen. If your success will happen, it is you that will make it happen. Look at your neighbor and say, it is you to make it happen. You must take responsibility to pray the kind of prayer that will bring success in your life. The kind of prayer that will open doors for you. You must take responsibility. If you leave it to others, they can never help you. Let me tell you, your success is not in the hands of your neighbor. Your success is in your hands. If you wait for people to encourage you, they will not encourage you. You must reach a point whereby when there is nobody to encourage you, you encourage yourself. You take responsibility of encouraging yourself. When there is no one to crap for you, you take responsibility and crap for yourself. Because if it is going to be, it will take you taking responsibility. Lift up your hand and say, Father, help me to take responsibility. Let, let, me, let me tell, let me, you know, when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking spiritually and in the natural. Because as long as we are in this world, those two dimensions we will live with. The natural dimension and the spiritual dimension. So I want you to take responsibility and invest in yourself. Invest in your life. Invest in your spirituality. Invest in your natural life. Take responsibility. Because nobody will take responsibility for you. You know, I, yesterday I was reading, I was teaching in, 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 the, in our minister's forum. And, and I read for them a, a scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5 in message translation. And I want to read it to you also. Galatians chapter 6 verse 5 in the message translation. This is what the Bible says. Each of you must take responsibility for doing creative best. The creative best you can with your own life. I challenge you, take responsibility over your life. Take responsibility over your family. Take responsibility over your future. If you are going to succeed, you know people, people only see today. People that take responsibility, they see their future. Let me ask you, there's something I asked somewhere I was preaching in town and I asked them, what are your plans for your retirement? You know, you think you'll be young all through. What are your plans for your retirement? In other words, what are your plans for tomorrow? Be responsible for your future. Improve yourself. So that you can succeed in the future. Let me tell you, everything is not about prayer. 
Because there are some things that prayer will not give you. I know I'm messing with somebody's theology. But it is true. Because the believers have repressed their responsibility to do things with prayer. But we must come to a point whereby we have taken responsibility because of our lives, because we want our lives to become better. Please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the only person responsible for your success is you. Please remind them again. Say, neighbor, the only person that is responsible for your success, it is you. If you will succeed, it will take you to take responsibility for your success. You must become, be like Jabez, who said, this situation must change. I will not wait for my brothers to change it. I will not wait for my mother to change my name. But I will take responsibility because this is my life. We must refuse to wait for others to change our situation. We must refuse to wait for others to take responsibility for us. We will take responsibility and we are saying my situation must change. My family must change. My business must change. My marriage might change. You take responsibility. You begin to call upon the name of the Lord. You begin to go on your knees. You pray to make it happen. So one role that you must take is taking responsibility for your life if success will be something that will be yours. And let me say this. Please do your best and leave the rest to God. I know you can do this far. But what I'm saying, do what you can be able to do and leave what you cannot be able to do to God. So number one thing is that you must be responsible for your success. Number two, you must believe in yourself. You must believe in yourself. You can write down the, the, the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 13. Where Paul is saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is a man that is believing in himself because he knows there is a hand that is backing him. Let me say this, if you don't believe in yourself, no one will believe in you. So the first thing, you must believe in yourself. If you are going to, to succeed, you must believe in yourself. I know you believe in God, I have no doubt about that, but do you believe in yourself? And let me, let me surprise you, God believes in you. So do you believe in yourself? Look at your neighbor and say, God believes in you. Ask them, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe you can make it? Do you believe you can have that breakthrough? Do you believe you can have success? Paul is saying, I can do all things. We must reach a point whereby we believe God so much that we know he will empower us to be able to succeed in every area of our endeavor. We can be able to break through and have success regardless of our background. You know, there are people who believe their background more than they believe in God. I don't care where you came from. You can succeed even with the kind of background that you have. Some of us came from very poor background. We came from background that we don't want to keep on mentioning. But God has helped us this far. 
And the reason we believe in ourselves is because number one, we have believed in God. God has empowered us and we know with him we can do all things. And I want to tell you, you can make it regardless of your background. You can make it regardless of where you come from. You are the type that succeeds in life. And I say you will succeed. Lift up your hand and say, I must succeed. One of the things I want you to know is that whatever you can conceive, you can achieve. If you can just conceive it and believe it, then you can achieve it. There is no magic to success. You believe in yourself, you believe in God. And let me say this, the people that believe in themselves, they shine in their generation. They succeed in their generation. And I want to tell somebody, you can become the next success story if you believe in yourself. I know you believe in God. Now believe in yourself and you can become the next success story. I see success stories that are seated here. I see families that will make it. I see people that will rise high. I see people that will succeed beyond their imagination because they believe in God and they believe in themselves. Some people like us, when you look, if you could have seen me when I was about 15 years old, you will never say I will be anything in life. But I believed in God and I believed in myself. And that is why I'm here. That is why I'm here. I was called by God with the mandate in Karura to come and repair and restore destinies. I believe the call of God, but I also had to believe in myself that I can make it. I can make that mandate come to pass. That is why I'm still here. Because, you know, let me say this. It is not enough to believe in God. I know I'm messing with somebody's theology. It is not enough I will say this again and again. It is not enough to believe in God. It takes more than that. The Bible says that even the devil believes until he shakes. So what is the difference between you and the devil? If he also believes in God, then you need to go a notch higher. Exercise that belief. You believe in God. Faith without works is dead. Now God says you can make it. Begin to make it. Start the journey to success. Start the journey to the top. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. You know, there are times in the, in the year, in the 80s and the early 90s, when we, God was bringing us up and, and, and making us rich. But we were not rich yet. We were just there. But sometimes I used to, to enter into great offices. And you know, I told you we've been brought up in, in Kenyogori Gekuyakui next to Moregeti Bibirioni. So when you hear those kinds of towns, it means that you are, you are, your esteem is very low. You have a low self-esteem because that's how you are brought, brought up. So I used to believe in myself. Sometimes I'm sent to, to go. I was sent one day to, to the treasury building and, and when I was going there, I put on my tie and everything. And I was, I geyuria pio and I came. Everybody was being stopped at the door. But geyuria jukita nyigire ite tadu takawera kuo. Kutiri mudu wa doga mirie. Ni udu wakwe itikia. I am not saying this is spiritual, but let me say this. There are some places you enter by believing in yourself. They look at you and they say, this man knows what he is doing. Even when I'm preaching, I believe in myself. 
Yes, God has given me the message, but I must believe that I will deliver it with wisdom, with power that can change a heart. It not the ego show the awkward way gira netago ko jure. We take ye. We take ye. We take ye. Let everybody know you have a great you know why we are believing ourselves? Because we have a great God. And I want you to know you can rise above every limitation. You may be in Karura, but you don't carry the Karura spirit. You carry the spirit of God. The spirit that cannot be intimidated. You know, where we went to school, as I've told you before that I went to Kinyogori Nasare, Kinyogori Primary, Kinyogori Secondary, but there was no Kinyogori University. And when you have gone to these kind of schools, You have no confidence. Let me tell you, it is the truth. Even in Form 4, we were not confident. And that is why I told you the other day, even when we, you make a statement in English, you are still shaking because you don't know whether you have done it right. And that is why I told you, like uh, uh, that one, uh, I, 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 I was talking to some people from the Rift Valley Academy. And they were asking me, what is happening? I said, I am listening to the pain. You know, it is direct translation. I had been hurt on my knee. And they're asking, what's happening? I said, I'm listening to the pain. Because that's the, what I knew. Now, when you see a man from those regions standing before and ministering powerfully, it is because they believe in God and they believe in themselves. I can say to you, you will become something. You must believe in God and believe in yourself. There is nothing too hard for God and there is nothing too hard for you. The Bible says that all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. If you are a believer, then all things are possible. Look at your neighbor and say, you will make it in this life. You tell them, you cannot be intimidated. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Even if nobody believes in you, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Because when you believe in yourself and you believe in God, there is nothing that you cannot do. The people that succeed, they are ordinary people. Like you. The difference is the belief. Do you believe in yourself? And I'll say that this again. God believes in you. Do you believe in yourself? I need people who say, I can, I can climb this mountain. I can leap over walls, like David is saying. I can leap over walls by his help. I need some people who will believe in themselves and believe in God and tell every Goriath that is standing on their way, I will cut your head and feed your flesh to the birds. This is a man that knows who he is and in whom he believes in. Give God a mighty hand.
Number three, you must control your thought life. Control your thought life. You know, there's this scripture that we read many, we, we read many times in the book of Proverbs 23, verse number 7, that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as, a, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Please don't tire, but look at your neighbor and tell them, you will become what you think. It is not me, it's the Bible. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if you want to know where you are headed, listen to your thoughts. So if you are going to have success in this life, you must control your thought life. If you will be successful, control your thought life. Because if you don't control your thoughts, they will control you. They will control you. You will always become like your thoughts. Let me say this. Your thoughts create the atmosphere around your life. Your thoughts is what creates the atmosphere that is around your life. And the quality of your thoughts determines the quality of your life. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Now I want to recommend the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 5. Please, can we read that? 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 verse number 5. The Bible says, Casting down argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now hear this. Bringing every thought into captivity of obedience of Christ. Your thought must be based on the word of God. So when God says you can succeed, you must start thinking those thoughts. The thoughts of success. Now, the Bible says, and please you give it to us, you can look it up, that, that the Bible commands us to have, let the mind that was in Christ be in you also. What mind? Let me ask you, do you think that Jesus ever thought of failure? Did he ever think that he can fail? No. So he, the Bible is saying, let the mind that was in Christ be in you also. So the mind of Christ is the mind of success, is the mind of breakthrough, is the mind of good things. You must carry the mind of Christ. This is the one, Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. No failure, no breakdown, no defeat. This is the kind of thought we must carry. You know, Job said that the thing that I feared is what has come upon me. Because, every, you know, let, let, let me say this. When you read, I believe, is it Job chapter 1 verse number 5? Please, can you check Job chapter 1, verse number 5? I want to see that. It was, so it was, when the days of feasting had run, la, 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 that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt sacrifice, burnt offerings, according to the number of them all. For Job said, 
It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did regularly. You know why he was sacrificing every time? So that to cover the family. And the Bible says in, in this chapter 3 verse number 25. Now listen carefully. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. In other words, his thoughts were thoughts that calamity will come. Fell job. Calamity after calamity. And he is saying, the thing that I feared has come upon me. What did he fear? That it shall not be well with him. And everything was messed up in his life because he carried the thought that things will not work well. Let me say this. Whatever you carry in your mind, is what you attract in your life. Your thoughts are like a magnet. They attract things. Whatever you think is what you attract. As a man thinketh, so is he. So you become like your thoughts. You attract what you're thinking in your heart. I am praying for you that God will help you to think the right thing. And let me say this. You can never think negative and experience a positive life. I know I've said that before. You can never think negative and experience a positive life. I pray that God will help you to always be positive in your thinking. To think like God thinks. He says... Go be fruitful. That's what we read. Genesis 1.28. Be fruitful. Multiply. Have dominion. Let the thoughts of being fruitful fill your mind. The thoughts of multiplication fill your mind. The thoughts of dominion fill your mind. We don't want to be fearful. We don't want things that will cause fear in us. You know why you must think positively? Because God is on your side. You must start to think big. As you think big, you attract big. Look at your neighbor and say, you become as your thoughts. Let me finish this point by saying this. Always remember that your thoughts are the architect of your destiny. Your thoughts are the architect of your destiny. They mold your destiny. They create your destiny. They create your experiences in life. Let me say this. If you lose control over your thoughts, you have lost the control over your life. I will say that again because I, I would want this to sink in your spirit because it is very important. If you lose the control of your thoughts, you have lost the control of your life. Okay. Our time is up. But let me go to the fourth one. The fourth one is remain Connected to God. Remain connected to God. Allow me to say this. God is the source of success. Can I say that again? God is the source of success. If you want to succeed in life, you must be connected to the source of success. You know why we are having light here? It is because we are connected to Kenya Power. You know why we are taking water here? We are connected to Karuri Water. So why are we enjoying the light? We are enjoying the right because we are connected to Kenya Power. We are enjoying the water. We are connected to the water company. If you want to enjoy success, be connected to where success comes from. And God is the source of success. 
Let me tell you this. True and lasting success comes from God. Comes from God. If you are disconnected from God, you can never have true success. You will only have what we call fake success. It will not last long. You know, those days, Dedan, when we were young, because we did not have the electricity, so we used to tap electricity from the pit latrine. I don't know whether you people, uh, Simon, you used to do those things. We used to, to connect, we used to have the wires, then we tie them with stones, we throw them in the pit latrine, because the, the human waste can produce a lot of power. So there is a way we used to do it and connect it into the house. But it lasted for some time. Then when the source is dry, then the power is gone. So any other source can dry. Only God cannot dry. Your success is sure. When you remain connected to God. Lift up your hand and say, Father, give me grace to remain connected to you. You know, I know I've given you this scripture before. The book of Psalms, chapter number 40, is it? Chapter 44, verse number 3, where the Bible says that we, they did not possess the land by their own sword, by their own strength. Let's read it. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did they own their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the right of your countenance, that countenance because you favored them. He's saying, the children of Israel possessed the land of Canaan, not because of their arm. The success that they got to possess the land, it was given to them by the hand of God. It is the hand of God that gives success. Remain connected to that hand. You know, because when you're connected to God, it doesn't matter where you are. God can still make you succeed even when you are not in the place where you are not supposed to succeed. You know, I, I was reading from the book of Genesis 39, and I read verse 1 and verse number 2, and I want to concentrate on verse number 2. Uh, and let's read both of them. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. Now listen to verse 2. Now, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Simple. He was connected even in Egypt, a fallen land. He was still connected to God, and he was a successful man. Your success is determined by your connection. And this, to that effect, the connection with God. When you're connected to God, then there is nothing that you cannot be able to achieve. You know, there was a man who was, uh, I'm finishing, who was a servant of Abraham. His name was Eriezer. And he realized that the only way to have success is when God gives it to you. And he says in Genesis chapter 24 and verse number 12, he has been sent on a mission by Abraham to go and fetch a woman, a wife for the, for the son of Abraham by the name of Isaac. And this is what he says. Then he said, oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please
please give me success this day. You know, that is what we are talking about. He knew that success can only come from God. And he is calling the God of his master Abraham. He remained connected to the God of his master so that he can be able to achieve success. <sighs> okay. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, when you read verse number 17 and verse number 18, let's read from verse number 17 because there's something I want you to see. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Did you hear that? God is telling to the people that you say that your hand, your might have made you gain the wealth that you have. But here, what verse 18 says. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. So he's telling them, it is not your arms that gives you wealth. It is God. Therefore, remember the Lord because he gives you the ability to make wealth. So if you're going to succeed in any area of your life, you must remain connected to God. Look at your neighbor and say, Wa mother, ikara wini tithanetia na gai. Receive grace to remain connected. Receive grace to remain connected. I am praying that God will help you to deal with all these things that we have learned today. That you may bath your success. Our topic was bathing our own success. So I pray that God will help you to bath your own success. You know, it is not up to God. God has said, has commanded, given you the success mandate. Has commanded you to go and be fruitful. Go and multiply. Go and have dominion. So it is you to take the role and make sure that you take responsibility for your success. You must make sure that you believe in yourself. And I want you to know success is your portion in this life. You are designed to succeed. God wants you to succeed. You know, let, let me ask you, who is more powerful, God or man? So God wants you to succeed. Man wants you to fail. Who will win? So I declare to all of you that you are about to win. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Everybody shout a big amen. amen. Celebrate the Lord in Jesus' name. So let your success be rooted in God, because any success that is not rooted in God does not last. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have brought forth your word as you give it to me. I am praying for your people that you will give them the grace to take responsibility for their success, to believe in themselves to control their thought life, and to remain connected to you that they may succeed in every area of their lives. We thank you, we worship you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, 
we have prayed. Amen and amen. You are blessed. You are highly favored in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I know we have taken your 15 minutes, but it's time to worship God with our offerings, with our tithes, and with our seeds. So please prepare yourself to worship God with your money. So for us who are here, we are going to bring our offerings on the altar. For the people that are online, they will use the pay bill number that is appearing on the screen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's pray for the offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to worship you with the substances that you have given us. As we do it, dear Father, give us success in our finances. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So we are bringing our offerings, our tithes, and our seeds on the altar. And the people online, please use the pay bill number to do it. You are most welcome in Jesus' name. I want to thank each one of you for coming to the service today. I also want to thank our online family for tuning into this broadcast. And I believe that the Lord has spoken to your hearts and that you're going to take responsibility for your success and that you continue to believe in yourself. And everything else shall follow because God designed you for success. He wants you to succeed and you cannot be otherwise. You will remain a success in Jesus' name. Before we finish with the words of grace, it's just to remind you or announce to the people who don't know of this coming Sunday, we are having a guest all the way from Kampara, Uganda. Apostle Peter Semei will be ministering to us in our first service and in our second service. So you, <laughs> yes. I know that you remember he, he ministered to us here in one of the, our first services very powerfully. So I've requested him to do it for us on Sunday. And I want to see whether we can also do it Monday and Tuesday so that we, we have three days, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And, and I know God will help us. <laughs> let's, let's even not say that we want to see. It will happen. We will have him Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday in Jesus' name. So please invite your friends and prepare yourself for a mighty move of God in your life on Sunday, on Monday, and on Tuesday. And God